In this video, we're going to take a look at every desktop GPU ever released by NVIDIA and one, see how well or how poorly they performed when they were released and two, if the GPU is still a good buy today. This is not a simple buying guide because there are simply too many variables. One, I have no idea where you live. I have no idea what the prices of GPUs are like where you are and I have no idea what GPUs are available. And two, comparing GPUs is kind of tricky. We primarily do that through playing games, but the frame rates of games can vary greatly. Not just because of the resolution that you're playing at, but also what map of the game are you playing on. Not just if the game has RTX, so that would favor newer cards, but also what level of detail you're playing the game on. And while the frame rates from one game are easier to compare with those of another game, those are only very rough comparisons. They don't tell the whole story. Odd things happen all the time in GPU comparisons. For example, a lower rank card will run a particular game faster than a higher rank card. Although overall, the higher rank card will have better performance. What I'd like for this video is for one to be a nostalgia trip, to kind of recapture that feeling of booting up your 1060 for the first time and thinking, damn, that's fast or that wow factor of playing a game on your new 980 Ti for the first time. And two, I'd like it to be a rough buying guide. Say you're torn between two GPUs, you can refer to this video and make a rough comparison of both GPUs. And then you factor in the considerations only you know about. How much are the GPUs? What games do you play? How many meals are you willing to skip in order to get respectable FPS? So hopefully this video, in conjunction with your own inputs and your own experience, will help you in a decision on what GPU to buy. Search for the software you need. Add to cart. Daan ka sa payment options nila. Wala pang 5 minutes. Finished! May legit working CD key ka na para sa Windows mo. Gamitin ng aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, Check out cdkeyoffers.com The first NVIDIA card that made an impression on me was the Riva TNT back in 1998. That wasn't their first card, but you get my point that they've been in the business for a long time. And to keep this video useful, let's just say that we took a look starting from the STG 2000, which was their first card, all the way up to the 600 series. And the conclusion is that you don't really want them for present day. So all of those cards, we took a look at them, considered them, you don't want them. Let's move on to the 700 series. The 700 series are the oldest set of cards that you might want to consider for present day use. Now for the 700 and 900 series, I don't go through all of their cards as I was guided by what's available to me locally. First up, released in January 2016, was the GT710. You don't want to buy this card. Basically, its purpose was to allow people to have multiple monitors. So it has a lot of ports for monitors. But its gaming performance was terrible then, even more so now. So you really don't want to buy it for gaming. The GTX 750 Ti came out in Feb 2014. It was the first card based on the then new Maxwell architecture meant to play 1080p at a very efficient power use. And for the most part, it succeeded. Reviewers at the time complimented the card that it was generally faster than its predecessors, such as the 650 Ti Boost. In its day, its performance was mid-range. To be fair, that was the target market of the card. However, eight years later, it's not doing so hot. Even GPU light games like Valorant only run at around 80 FPS. And for Valorant, that's a crazy low frame rate. So a decent card then, but not so good now. Let this eight-year-old guy rest. Especially because some reviewers reported some modern titles not even running anymore on the GTX 750 Ti. The GTX 760 came out in June 2013, and it wasn't a bad card for its time. Only incremental performance increased over the comparable 600 series cards, but the price was good. Fast forward though to present day and the card is not looking so hot. Reviewers saw only around 50 FPS at 1080p on COD Warzone. 
30-ish FPS on Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p. Fortnite had around 70 FPS but that's really quite low for that title. So there are limited scenarios where a 760 might be good if you're interested in esports titles, MOBA games, if the price is really good. If you want to give a PC to someone you don't really like, you know, there are limited scenarios where you might want to use a 760, but overall, it's not a good card for present day. The GTX 780 came out in May 2013, and it's a scaled-down version of the GTX Titan card, promising 90% performance of the Titan card at 65% of the cost. So it was a little pricey even when it was released, but the performance was pretty damn good for its time. It was the first of the 700 series to be announced, and as NVIDIA described it at the time, it's 50% more of everything of the 680. So a bit pricey at $650 when it was released, it might be a good deal now, depending on what you can get it for where you are. It does play modern games surprisingly well. Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p at max settings is around 40 FPS. Elden Ring at 1080p low settings is around 50 FPS. Control at 1080p is barely playable though at around mid-30s. Warzone at high is pretty good actually, with an FPS of around high 50s. Valorant at 1080p settings was quite high actually, with some reviewers reporting 300 FPS or so, which is, which is pretty good for a card of this age. And finally, Battlefield 5 at uh, 1080p at high settings was high 60s. Frame rates did dip in Cyberpunk 2077, which only saw low 30s for the frame rate. So overall, a decent card if you can get it at a good price. Onto the 900 series with the GTX 950, which was released August 2015. Reviewers really liked this card. It was the entry level for the 900 series, with performance almost as good as the 960, which came out at the start of that year. So good value for your money. However, with entry level cards, they of course age worse than higher end models. And we can see this in the benchmarks for today's games. Elden Ring at 1080p was at high 30s. The same for Cyberpunk. However, for Cyberpunk, the 1% low tally was at 10 FPS. So very janky. That's unplayable. CSGO was at around 120 FPS. Not bad, very playable, but that is CSGO. Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p was around 30 FPS. So not very good. COD Warzone at 720p was high 40s, and that was the same for God of War at 1080p. Lastly, we've seen reviewers saying that Valorant at 1080p can hit frame rates of high 170s, which is quite fast, but again, that is Valorant, which is well optimized already. So the 950 might have been good then, but might not be such a good option now. So the GTX 960 actually came out January 2015, and it was an okay card. The conclusion of most reviewers being it was good but not superlative. It came out in a 2GB and 4GB version, the 4GB being around $50 more expensive. Its performance though has been overshadowed by more recent cards. NVIDIA clocks the 1660 as around 113% faster than this GTX 960. Most other benchmarks actually rate the 1660 a bit faster than that. So the 1660 is the later card, but it clearly trumps the 960. So if you're deciding between those two, it really comes down to price. And even with a slightly big price increase, if you have to jump to a 1660, that performance increase might be worth it. GTX 970 was one of the first crop of 900 series GPUs coming out in September 2014. And its performance is pretty good. Overclocked, it could even beat the higher-end 980. It was also significantly better priced than its competitor AMD cards back in the day. Pitting it against more modern cards, it's around 15% slower than a 1060, so not too bad if you can find it at a good price, and around 44% slower than a 1060. Cyberpunk at 1080p was at around 40 FPS, so a much better performance than the earlier 900 cards I talked about. Valorant at 1080p ran at a blistering 300 FPS, and COD Warzone was at around 70 FPS at 1080p. So the 970 actually is not bad, and the card doesn't quite reach up to the level of what most people would be comfortable with, but in more optimized or older titles like Valorant or COD, 
the car does quite well for its age. Coming out the same time as the 970 was the GTX 980 in September 2014. It was faster than the 780 Ti, but you know, not superlatively so. Price-wise also, it was cheaper than the 780 Ti, but most reviewers found this card to be a bit overpriced for what you got. As mentioned earlier, an overclocked 970 could beat a 980. Performance in today's games was slightly better than those reported for the 970. Considering the overclock potential of the 970, and it might be better just to get that card and OC it. These are older cards, so you might not mind the increased wear and tear of overclocking. You're not going to be keeping these for much longer. Finally, the last of the 900 series, the 980 Ti, coming out in June 2015. And this card actually performs quite well, even in modern games. It's 70% faster than a 780, and it's roughly 1070 performance, but you can even overclock it to make it faster than a 1070. Depending on the game and depending on your overclock, this card might even give better performance than a stock 1660 Ti, but there's are limited circumstances. It is around 12 to 25% slower than a 2060, depending on the game and depending on your settings. It can game decently at 2K, so this is the first older card that we've seen that can manage that. And it does pull up to mid-40s in Cyberpunk at 1080p. So again, the first older card that can have a playable experience with in Cyberpunk. Interestingly, even against a 3050, which is a much newer card at 1080p, in most benchmarks, the 3050 is faster, but only at around 10 FPS or so. Considering how much newer the 3050 is, that's quite a statement to the 980 Ti. And it might be good value for your money, depending if you can find it. Alright, we start with the 10 or 1000 series. So this is the Pascal line of NVIDIA, classic GPU lineup. A lot of the gamers now cut their teeth with the 10 series. So a lot of good memories for a lot of us. But if you got the GT 1030, depending on when you got it, you might not have such good memories. The original came out in May 2017, and then there was a re-release in March 2018. The difference though between the two releases was that the first one had 2GB of GDDR5 memory. The 2018 release had 2GB, yes, but of DDR4 memory, the same kind of memory that we use for RAM. And performance really degraded when NVIDIA swapped out the memory. That's a 65% decrease in memory bandwidth because of the change to DDR4 memory. And it leaves a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths because NVIDIA was not upfront with the second release that, oh yes, by the way, we've changed the memory and this impacts the performance quite significantly. So if for some reason you are hunting for a 1030, definitely try to get the earlier release. Performance was shot to hell with the 2018 release. You might not want to bother because performance in modern games is not that great for the 1030. While it was well received back in the day because of its low power consumption and good value for money, even older beefier cards like the 780 or the 980 or the 970 have much better performance at much better prices now. Next is the GTX 1070, released October 2016 and May 2018. Sort of an entry-level card. It's a cheaper, slightly faster version of the 950. And its performance is roughly half that of a 1060. Budget cards or entry-level cards don't really age that well. You get around mid-30s in Cyberpunk. Elden Ring as well, both at 1080p, gets mid to high 30s. Not that great. Not that bad, but you can probably find a better card out there. Next up is the GTX 1050 Ti, released in October 2016. This is only slightly faster than 1050, so its performance in modern games is basically the same. Mid to high 30s, both in Cyberpunk and Elden Ring. Reviewers have reported Warzone at 1080p at around mid 50s. So, same scoring as the 1050. Not terrible, but not the best value you can probably find nowadays. A card that does hold up quite well is the 1060 and it's had three releases in 2016, 2017, and 2018. 
performance was good then and it was lauded for that and performance is good even now. It does 1080p quite well and decent 2K gaming is even an option. It's around 60% faster than a 1050 Ti. Even though it only has 3GB of GDDR5 memory compared to the 4GB of the 1050 Ti. It does clearly outperform a 980, so the 1060, if you get it at a good price, is really quite a good card. Even in modern games like Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, we were seeing mid-80s frame rates with a 1% frame rate drop of high 60s, which is really, really good. This is the first OD card that has managed this sustained level of performance in a modern game. Cyberpunk 1080p was at mid-40s with a 1% frame rate drop of high 30s. A demanding title, but the performance of the 1060 is quite remarkable, even in that game. So the 1060 is a clear winner to try to find if you're looking for a good older card. Also no slouch is the GTX 1070 released in June 2016. It was well reviewed then and it makes 2K gaming possible at an affordable price. In terms of performance, the 1070 basically beat everything on the market at the time, including the Titan cards, which was quite an achievement. It only came second to the 1080. And it will still handle even modern titles at medium settings reasonably well. Reviewers have reported Warzone 1080p at max settings at around 100 plus FPS. That's even better than a 1660 Super in that game. Elden Ring at 1080p max settings was at mid-50 FPS. That ties the performance of a 3050 and again outperforms a 1660 Super. Cyberpunk 1080p at medium settings was at high 60s. Tie with the 1660 Super and just below a comparable performance from a 3050. In the same game, at 2K resolution, it managed low 40s and the 1660 Super was at mid 40s. So the 1660 Super does trump it a little bit at 2K resolution, but not by much. And to round things out at 2K resolution for Cyberpunk, the 3050 was pushing around 50 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn 1080p was at high 80s. So very good performance from a 1070 and you're starting to see here cards that can hold their own at certain settings even with newer cards. GTX 1070 Ti came out November 2017. The last of the 10 series came out even later than the 1080 Ti. The 1070 Ti is closer in performance to a 1080 rather than 1070. And there's a lot of room for overclocking potential here. Take note though that the memory of the 1070 Ti is GDDR5 compared to the GDDR5X memory of the 1080. So a bit pricey when it came out for the base clock, but you can overclock it past the performance of a 1080. The ostensible reason why Nvidia pumped this card out is that it took a while for AMD to catch up to the 1070, but eventually it did. So NVIDIA needed a performance boost to have a card that would be faster than the AMD cards of that era. It still does well in modern games. You have Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p, mid-60s. Warzone 1080p at low settings, 120 to 130 FPS, so quite fast. Horizon Zero Dawn 1080p at low settings, you get around 100 FPS. And even in a chaotic battle scene, reviewers have reported FPS of at around 80. So still quite good. And the granddaddy of video cards, a lot of people have good memories of this, the GTX 1080, which came out May 2016 and April 2017. Yes, it was expensive. Of course, it's a flagship card, but actually it provided good value for money. The jump in performance was higher compared to other flagship cards when they were released. It's roughly double the performance of a 980 and roughly around 35% faster than a 980 Ti. With a 1080, 4K gaming in some titles is possible, so you can really appreciate the horsepower on this old card. Like the 1070 Ti, it does quite well in modern games. Red Dead Redemption 2 1080p at high settings was around mid-40s. Cyberpunk 1080p ultra settings, 60 FPS or so. And Elden Ring 1080p max settings, also around 60 frames per second. So the 1080 is no slouch even for modern gaming. 
if you can get it at a good price, this is one of those cards that you can still game on comfortably even today. And the fastest of the 10 line, the 1080 Ti, released March 2017. Depending on which benchmarks and on which games you're looking at, it's around 20 to 50% faster than the 1080. And because of this card, the price of the 1080 dropped to around $500 when it came out. So a beast, legendary card. You can expect it to be quite good even today. It's around 22% faster in 4K than the 1080. Compared to a modern card like a 3080, it's roughly around 60% slower. But you wouldn't know it when you start playing. COD Warzone 1440p at high settings was at around 90 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn 1440p ultra settings mid 60s. Cyberpunk 1440p at high settings was at around mid 40s for FPS. So definitely the 1080 Ti still has some gas in the tank and you might want to consider it if you can find it at a good price. Starting with the 16 series, with the 1630, which came out in June 2022, and this is a horrible card, most likely to win the worst GPU of 2022. It's basically a pared down 1650, which came out three years ago, but the 1650 has double its performance, and the 1630 is more expensive than the 1650 when it came out. So really, let's not waste your time anymore. This is a horrible card, don't get it. You can get the 1650, for the same price or cheaper and the 1650 has much better performance. GTX 1650 released April 2019 and April and June 2020. Modern budget GPU, low power draw, decent 1080p gaming. It's faster than the 1050 by around 55% but slower than a 1060. So it's a decent budget card, but if you can find older cards that are faster for cheaper, that might be the better option. Next up, the 1650 Super released November 2019, and to be fair, it earned the Super title. It's around 30 to 40% faster than the 1650. Thanks in large part to the GDDR6 memory it has, the non-Super version only has GDDR5. You can expect solid 1080p gaming from the 1650 Super. This is one of those cards that is at a good sweet spot in terms of performance and price. If you can find it only slightly more expensive than the 1650, I'd recommend getting the 1650 Super. The cost of performance wise, you're getting a lot more oomph with the 1650 Super. The 1660 came out March 2019 and it was around 20% cheaper than the 1660 Ti which came out a month before. That price reduction is mostly in part because it uses GDDR4 memory instead of the TI's GDDR6. But performance-wise, it's no slouch. It's good bang for your buck for 1080p gaming. It's slightly faster than the 1060 which it's supposed to replace. Jump to October 2019 with the release of the 1660 Super and this is a great card both in terms of performance and for the price that you needed to shell out to get that performance. For performance, it's closer to the 1660 Ti compared to the base 1660, in large part because it uses GDDR6 memory like the 1660 Ti. So you're getting very similar performance to the Ti at much less of the cost. Substantial performance gains over their base cards at a substantially reduced price from the higher Ti models. Finally, the 1660 Ti came out Feb 2019. It was supposed to replace the 1070, so it's roughly analogous to that card, and it's supposed to be faster than a 1060. Solid 1080p performer, and it's even decent in some 2K titles. But it's hard to recommend the 1660 Ti now, considering that the 1660 Super is available. The Super really gets you just about the same performance as the Ti at much less of the cost. So the Ti occupies this very awkward middle ground between if you want to save some money, you'd be better off with the 1660 Super. And if you want to splurge a bit more, then you want to go with the 2060. There's really no clear reason to get a 1660 Ti at this point, unless you can find it at a really good price. Finally, we arrived to the Touring series with the 2060 card, although the 16 series was based on Touring, but without RTX. The 2060 came out Jan 2019, Jan 2020 and December 2021. The last date is important, we'll talk about it in a bit. But when the 2060 came out, reviewers weren't really that impressed. You know, it was a bit expensive, they felt for the performance that you were getting. And while it had RTX, the frame rates really suffered when you turned RTX on. So you were kind of 
left with an either or choice like do I want more FPS with RTX off or do I want the extra graphic bling bling at the sacrifice of frames per second. So the 2060 became sort of an entry level card. Yes, it had RTX but at the same time it performed better without it. NVIDIA did update this card in December 2021, doubling the memory to 12 gigabytes. However, they retained the 192-bit memory bus. So while there is a performance increase, it's not as noticeable. It's not like you're getting double the performance with the December 2021 version of this card. So bottom line, if you are thinking about getting this card, you do need to do your research. A, are you getting the older 6GB version or the newer 12GB version? B, what games are you playing and will you prefer them with RTX on or off? Although at this stage in the game, most games coming along in the pipeline will have RTX. So perhaps you want to spend more money on a card that delivers RTX at decent frame rates. A card that won't ask you to choose between frame rates and RTX. Finally, the 12GB version of the 2060 does make it faster than the original 2060 but slower than the 2060 Super. Speaking of the 2060 Super, it came out July 2019 and again it lives up to the Super line. Performance was great, especially for the SRP. Performance was closer to the 2070 rather than the 2060 and this card reviewers really liked a lot putting it in a sweet spot for price and performance. Good value for money card. If you can find it now and it's in your budget, it's a good option. The 2070 came out October 2018 and this was supposed to be a mid-range enthusiast card. Although like the 1660 Super before it, this card has been supplanted, replaced, don't think about it anymore because you want to get the 2060 Super, which basically gives you the same performance at a noticeably lower price point. Although the 2070 is interesting from a historical point of view because it's evidence that NVIDIA has been pushing the goalposts for what's a good price for a mid-range card for years now. For years now, they've been trying to condition us that you need to pay more for a mid-range card. Again, this came out October 2018, before the pandemic, before all of the supply issue craziness. And then just to put it in perspective, the X70 series has traditionally been for mid-range enthusiasts with the X80 series being bonkers, expensive, very muscle performance. So to compare, the 1080, which was supposed to be the high-end expensive card, came out at around $440. The 2070, which again was supposed to be mid-range, came out at $500. So, so for years now, before the pandemic, before all of the price craziness we've seen, NVIDIA has been pushing slowly, silently, quietly to condition us that you need to pay more even for mid-range cards. And you know, there's a lot of backlash now against the pricing of the 40 series, but really it's been going on for years with NVIDIA pushing its prices higher and higher. The 2070 was supposed to replace the 2080. It does come out faster in some games, but slower in others. So it's a mixed bag. Of course, with, that's with RTX off, since the 1080 doesn't have RTX. Rounding out the 2070 line is the 2070 Super, which came out July 2019, and again, it lives up to the Super line. Much closer in performance to the 2080. In fact, some reviewers dubbed it the card that the 2080 should have been. So the performance that we were expecting at the high end, at the price that we were expecting. Again, substantially faster than the 2070, with performance closer to the 2080. Excellent 1440p gaming. This really makes the 2070 obsolete. It's faster than the 2070 at lower the cost. We come to the 2080, released September 2018, and it was the first of its name, the first of the touring line to be released. Reviewers weren't really that impressed with this card. Yes, it's a beefy card. Of course, it's in the X80 line, but it was quite pricey for the performance that you were getting. But to be fair, what performance? Very playable 4K settings. The high price just left a sour taste in the mouths of reviewers. Nowadays though, it wasn't a well-regarded card and nowadays you don't really need to think about it too much because the 2070 Super basically gives you the same performance at a much lower cost. So a beefy card, but as it wasn't good value then, its cost-to-performance ratio has only dropped in the years after its release.
The inevitable 2080 Super came out July 2019, and this is the only Super to sort of let us down. You know, the 1650 Super, the 1660 Super, the 2060 Super, and the 2070 Super were all Super. Their performance gains over their base cards were very clear. The 2080 Super, yes, gives you a performance gain, but not that much. It is slower than the 2080 Ti, but at a reduced cost, to be fair to the card. So nothing really groundbreaking, earth-shattering. Yes, you do get a small bump over the 2080. There isn't really a clear reason to look for this card on the secondary market unless you find one at a really cheap price. And finally, you have the 2080 Ti, which launched alongside the 2080 in September 2018. You know, it's the X80 Ti, so of course, it's a very beefy card. You get very playable 4K gaming. It was quite expensive though, another example of NVIDIA pushing higher prices over the years. To compare, the 1080 Ti came out at around $700. The 2080 Ti Founders Edition came out at around 1,200 US. You're almost paying double over the price of a 1080 Ti to get the 2080 Ti brand new. So again, just more evidence in case you needed more that Nvidia has been pushing higher prices for years. To be fair though, with the 2080 Ti, it was king of the hill for a long time. Performance was top notch for its time. Really muscular card, 4K gaming, very doable. So you did get what you paid for, but you know, even back then, 1,000 plus US for a GPU was really quite extravagant. We've gone through a whole bunch of cards and finally we've arrived at the 30 series, currently Nvidia's top of the line cards. Yes, the 40 series is just right around the block, but they're not here yet. Starting off the 30 series, we have the 3050, which came out January 2022. So it's primarily a 1080p card, but you can get decent 2K out of it in some games. It scores slightly faster than the 1660 Ti and the 1660 Super in some games. But of course, the 3050 does have RTX and DLSS, features that those two other cards don't have. The 3050 does use the same chips used in the 3060, but they're probably rejects or the ones that aren't able to meet the speed specifications of the 3060. It is slightly faster than the original 2060 and around 25% slower than a 3060. So the debate I always see now is whether you should get a 3050 or the updated 2060. Personally, I find what you get with the 3050 a bit pricey for what you're paying for. So again, it really boils down to local context. How much are you getting the card for? Especially if it's a second-hand card, does it come at a substantial discount? If you can find it at the right price, and most of your gaming is at 1080p, then the 3050 would be a solid performer. On to the 3060, which came out Feb and September 2021. Market rate now is at around $375, $400. So, so not that much off from the SRP. The intent of the 3060 was to replace the much beloved 1060 card, which you know sold really well. It was really good value for money. A lot of gamers jumped on that card. But the 3060 is a bit more expensive, so we probably won't see the same adoption rates with it as the 1060. Performance-wise, you're basically looking at a tie between the 3060 and the 2060 Super for less. So as is a common thread with the 30 series cards, you know, it's a bit pricey for the performance that you get. The 3060 Ti came out December 2020, and while it was more expensive than the 3060, this is actually better value for money for the performance that you're getting. It's roughly equivalent to a 2080 Super, but for cheaper, comparing the launch prices of the two cards. You're getting very good 1440p gaming and even decent 4K gaming with the 3060 Ti. So this is an example of if you pay a bit more, you're getting better mileage down the line. The extra oomph of the card makes it better value than the cheaper 3060. Although for best value for money of the 30 series cards, reviewers usually give that to the 3070, which came out October 2020. Its MSRP was at around $500, and for that price, considering that it made 4K gaming attainable, it was seen as a viable entry level for 4K gaming, assuming though that you could find it at around that price. 
So reviewers were quite kind to this card. They really liked how beefy it was, that it was capable of 4K gaming. So it gave good value, a bit steep at $500, but you're getting what you pay for. What wasn't good value for your money is the 3070 Ti, which came out January 2021. So yes, it is a bit faster than the 3070, but for the substantial price jump, it's not really worth it. The performance increase over the 3070 is very marginal. Next up is the 3080, which came out September 2020 and January 2022. And this card is a classic X80 series card, so a bit on the pricey side, but exactly what you want for gaming. It has excellent gaming performance, and the performance gains over the previous gen, 2080 and the 2080 Ti, are very clear. It's another card where, yes, quite expensive, but you're getting the performance that you're paying for. It was re-released in January 2022 with 12GB of memory instead of 10GB. There is a small performance increase with the newer version of the card, but the original still holds up very well in today's gaming environment. Continuing the thumbs down for the TI series though is the 3080 Ti, which came out June 2021. Nothing really much has to be said for it. You do get marginal performance. There is a slight performance gain, but the price jump doesn't justify it. On to the last two cards, the 3090, released September 2020. You know, the 3090 is a beast of a card. You know, the 3080 was muscle. The 3090 is muscle on steroids. Um, the price, of course, is quite expensive. A lot of reviewers felt that, you know, for gaming, you can stop at 3080. While the 3090, yes, is very muscular, and it was nice to own it at the time to say that you had the world's fastest card, the performance gains didn't justify the added cost. But if you needed it for work, or again, if you just wanted to have that feeling that yes, this is the biggest, most muscular card, it did give you that oomph. Although it does have to be said that uh, NVIDIA got a bit ahead of itself with its marketing. Around the time that the 3090 came out, it was actually being hyped as capable of 8K gaming. Although Gamers Nexus does have a good video explaining that this is really just marketing hype. 8K gaming is not here yet and that's not really a bad thing since we haven't really even reached 4K gaming yet for a lot of the mainstream titles and hardware. But 3090, just another example where NVIDIA kind of being a bit too excited with itself and trying to push a feature that wasn't there yet. So the 1390 did come out September 2020. It's not the fastest gun in the West right now. That title belongs to the 3090 Ti, which came out March 2022. So again, this is a very incremental improvement over the 3090. There isn't really a lot of reason to get it, other than the fact that you want to say that you have the fastest, meanest, largest, gun in the West. And that's really it. So those are all of the NVIDIA cards that we think you might come across in the secondary market to a lesser or greater degree. I, I don't expect to see a lot of 3090 Ti cards right now since it's brand new and if you had just bought it, why sell it right away? The 40 series is of course just around the corner. People have been moaning and complaining about the pricing and we'll have to see actually and pricing will probably be even more than the MSRP of NVIDIA. So there is a lot of incentive now to try to find older value cards. And I hope this video has helped you, if not pinpoint a specific card, at least narrow it down. Like, should you get a 2060 over a 3050? What's the difference between the OG version of the 3080 versus the re-released January 2022 version? If you have any experiences with these cards, like you're still rocking a 2060 and loving it, please do mention it in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in real-world talk from the owners themselves on, yes, I think, you know, a 1080 is still viable, a 2060 refresh was good for me. Because even as the pandemic recedes and chip shortages don't become as grave, it looks like really expensive GPUs will be with us for the foreseeable future. So the survival skills you learn during the pandemic, looking at older cards for your gaming, is still a skill you're going to need to use moving forward. Paminsan, may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted, yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually, meron. Kami. Full-service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. 
Nagbebenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days magkita tayo sa shop.